So my name is Ryan, and the title of my talk is AI Will Take Your Job and Other Baseless Claims. So don't worry, I'm not here to scare you or bore you. I'm here to enlighten you and entertain you and maybe make you laugh a little or cry a little, depending on your mood. All right, so by now you've probably heard a couple of scary headlines about how AI is coming for your job, your wife, your kids, your dog, etc. And you've probably seen such sterling examples as AI will destroy 40% of jobs in 15 years. AI will replace 800 million workers by 2030. And of course, the old classic, AI will make humans obsolete. <clears throat> so game over, right? Well, not quite. You see, AI is a hot topic these days. Everyone's talking about it, writing about it, tweeting about it, and everyone has an opinion about it. Some are optimistic, some are pessimistic, some are realistic, some are just plain clueless. So how can we separate the facts from the fiction? How can we understand the true impact of AI on jobs and society? <clears throat> well, one way is to use a simple tool called the Gardner Hype Cycle, <clears throat> or as you might know it, the Hype Train. Uh, right, so this tool shows how technologies evolve over time from their inception to their adoption, <clears throat> and it has five phases. So the first phase is the technology trigger. This is when a new technology is born and gets some attention. People get excited and curious and the media starts to get hyperbolic. The second stage is the peak of inflated expectations. So a few early adopters try out the technology and share their success stories. People get more excited and curious and the media becomes more hyperbolic. <clears throat> uh, the third stage is the trough of disillusionment. So the technology fails to meet the inflated expectations and faces some challenges. People get disappointed and frustrated and the media gets bored. And then we have the slope of enlightenment. So this is when the technology improves and matures and actually starts to find some practical use cases. People get interested and optimistic again and the media starts to become more positive. And finally, we have the plateau of productivity. So the technology becomes widely used and integrated into everyday life. People get to use it and benefit from it and uh, the media gets bored, essentially moves on to whatever the next hottest thing is. So a lot of new technologies follow this pattern of being introduced, becoming overhyped, failing to meet those expectations, and then slowly over time, finding real world um, use cases until we essentially have integrated into our society. So let's look at the hype cycle for AI technologies in 2023. So you can see we've got quite a few here. We've got computer vision on the slope of enlightenment there. And then right at the peak of the inflated expectations is generative AI. Right, so the hype, hype cycle helps us see why AI is often misunderstood and feared. AI is not one thing, but many things. It's a collection of technologies that enables machines to do things that normally require human intelligence. Things like learning, natural language processing, computer vision, speech recognition, robotics, Etc. Each of these technologies has its own hype cycle, depending on how developed and adopted it is. For example, computer vision has been around for a longish time and has become more popular in recent years thanks to big data, fast computers, and smart algorithms. It is now on the slope of enlightenment phase, as more companies and organizations are using it to solve real problems and create real value. On the other hand, Natural language generation is a newer technology that enables machines to produce natural sounding text from data or other inputs. NLG is still in the peak of inflated expectations phase as it generates a lot of buzz and excitement, but also faces a lot of challenges and controversies. <clears throat> Chat GPT. So you can see how this hype cycle can cloud our judgment about a technology, especially in the early days when it's still in the peak of inflated expectations and we haven't really seen how it will actually impact um, our daily life. So let's look at a few times in history when the hype about a new technology clouded our judgment of the future. Printing press. So printing, the invention of the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg in the 15th century revolutionized the way information was shared. So scribes and copyists resisted the printing press as they saw it as a threat to their livelihoods and skills. Sound familiar? But the printing press created new jobs and opportunities for publishers, editors, authors, illustrators, bookbinders, booksellers, and librarians, 
and so on, and also stimulated literacy and education. So before the printing press, there were about 30,000 scribes and copyists in Europe. But by the 16th century, after the invention of the printing press, there were about 200,000 printers and publishers in Europe. So almost a 10x gain in jobs there for the printing press. We have the automobile. So the invention of the automobile by Carl Benz in 1886 gave people the freedom to travel more easily and independently. So horse-drawn carriage drivers, blacksmiths, and stable owners resisted the automobile as they saw it as a destroyer of their business. However, the automobile created new jobs in industries such as car manufacturers, mechanics, dealers, drivers, gas station attendants, road builders, and traffic police. It also stimulated tourism and leisure and suburbanization. So before the car, there were about 3.2 million workers in the U.S. horse industry in 1910. By 1950, there were about 8.2 million workers in the U.S. automobile industry. So a net gain of about 5 million jobs there for the automobile. And the telephone. The invention of the telephone by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876 allowed people to communicate with each other over long distances. Some groups feared that it would disrupt social norms, invade privacy, or harm health. Telegraph operators, postal workers, and messenger boys also resisted the telephone for obvious reasons. However, the telephone created new jobs in industries such as phone manufacturers, installers, operators, repairers, and marketers. It also stimulated commerce, communication, and innovation. So there were about 150,000 workers in the U.S. telegraph industry in 1902 for the widespread adoption of the tele uh, telephone. By 1929, there were about 1 million workers in the U.S. telephone industry. So again, almost 10x game there in jobs. So these examples show us that new technologies can create more jobs than they destroy by opening up new market sectors and opportunities for human labor. However, they also show us that new technologies can cause significant disruptions and transitions for workers and society. As some skills and occupation, op, occupations become obsolete or less valuable, while others become more in demand or more valuable. Therefore, we need to be prepared and adaptable, adaptable for the changes that AI will bring to the world of work. <clears throat> what are those changes? Let's look at some concrete examples. It's predicted AI will create jobs. According to a report by PwC, AI will create more jobs than it displaces by 2037. Augment roles. According to a report by the World Open Economic Forum, AI will create 133 million new roles by 2022, while displacing 75 million roles for a net gain of 58 million roles. And increased GDP. According to a report by McKinsey, AI will create an additional $13 trillion in economic activity by 2030, boosting global GDP by 1.2% per year. And that's a lot of money. Thank you. So in summary, AI might take your job, but it'll probably create 10 more in the process. <laughs>